After all that King of the Ring, I want to get back to normality. Here's week 23 of what happened on my universe mode. And as always, we started with Raw, which was in Bakersfield, California, opening with a match between Dean Ambrose and Rusev. But you never guess what, Brock Lesnar was there to rain on Dean Ambrose's parade. To begin with though, Brock Lesnar didn't get involved, he sat there quietly watching as the two battled it out on the inside and then the outside. Back on the inside though, Rusev took control of the belly to belly before Dean Ambrose countered with a side suplex. And then Dean Ambrose uh, got in Brock Lesnar's face but it ended up badly for him as Rusev went to the outside and whacked him in the face. Brock didn't know anything and he walked off. Meanwhile, Rusev attacked Dean Ambrose, slamming him down, kicking him in the face, and then locking in the accolade, which eventually Ambrose tapped out to. Next up on Raw, we had a tag match, and Roman Reigns and John Cena, Team Fuckboy, were there to victimize another poor pairing. This time it was Billy Gunn and X Pac who were guesting over from SmackDown. And they just well, sat there and took everything that Reigns and Cena gave to them. It uh, got a bit hard to view at times. After that Superman punch and a spear, Roman Reigns tagged in John Cena, who first hit the five knuckle shuffle, and then a quick AA for the victory. Another win for Team Fuckboy! We moved on to Divas action next as the Divas champion Paige took on Trish Stratus once again in a great open matchup. Trish opened the moves with a Luthers press and a flapjack before Paige clotheslined her way back into it and kneed Trish in the face. Eventually Trish would gain the advantage again throwing Paige to the mat before nailing a handstand head scissors. Trish lost the advantage and Paige turned the page with a Paige turner before hitting a rampage hoping for the victory. She didn't get it. A Russian leg sweep and a running springboard bulldog later and Trish Stratus was victorious over the Divas champ once again. It looked like a huge match coming up next when Randy Orton took on Bray Wyatt in the semi-final of Raw, but Daniel Bryan put paid to that when he attacked Bray Wyatt before the match, giving Randy Orton a massive advantage. And he took full advantage of that advantage, hitting the DDD off the second rope and a couple more moves before landing an RKO and pinning him for the victory. The story didn't end there however, after the match a furious Bray Wyatt came and confronted Daniel Bryan and in the end they came to blows and there's a pay per view coming soon where these two could be featuring in a match, possibly in some sort of cell. Raw's main event featured the Celtic Warrior taking on Mr. Money in the Bank Seth Rollins and an open beginning with both men hitting some strikes ended when Seth Rollins took the advantage with a Northern Lights suplex for hitting a frog splash and a tornado DDT before Sheamus finally got the advantage back hitting some massive power moves. At some point Sheamus hit one power move too many and Seth Rollins sent him to the outside before diving from the top rope to the outside, knees first to the face. Back in the ring and Sheamus reversed, hitting a spine buster followed by a signature. But it wasn't enough. Seth Rollins kneed him in the head, hit the buckle bomb before curb stomping him down and being victorious. Seth Rollins wins. Next up it was Main Event which hailed from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We opened with Macho Man Randy Savage taking on Andre the Giant in a rematch from King of the Ring the night before. And in that match Andre the Giant came out victorious so Savage wanted to make an impression. And at the start he did but eventually Andre kneed him in the head a few times and took the advantage back. He was in a bear hug for a god knows how long before he let go and then Andre dived on him from the second rope to his back. Macho Man hit a few moves like a neck breaker and a bulldog but it wasn't enough. Andre hit the butterfly suplex and won the match. Afterwards Andre seemed like he was getting frustrated by Macho Man constantly coming at him. Took him out. We had a tag team debut on main event when the Hart Smith Foundation took on the natural disasters Earthquake and Typhoon. An earthquake started off like a house on fire beating down Jim the Anvil Neidhart and then Typhoon took over squashing him in the process. 
They were double teaming Neidhart before Neidhart eventually tagged out to the British Bulldog, who hit a couple of moves on Earthquake, but it was only a matter of time before Earthquake got the advantage and hit the British Bulldog's own finisher on him. He then clotheslined the Bulldog down, suplexed him from the top rope, and then hit the Earthquake sit down thing. But splash! Victory for the natural disasters. Our mid main event matchup was between Cactus Jack and Batista in a normal singles match. No hardcore for you, Cactus, although that didn't stop him biting Batista's head. Uh, but after a couple of moves, Batista got the advantage and slammed the shit out of him, hitting a body slam and a belly to belly before chucking him to the outside and throwing him into the steel steps. Cactus Jack, though, he got the advantage back, throwing Batista into the ring and then in the ring, uh, kneeing him in the stomach. Although when he put a rest hold on, Batista reversed, punched him in the gut, hit a spine buster and then finished him off with a Batista bomb. And surprisingly, easily, Batista won the match. In yet another rematch, European champion Booker T took on Stone Cold Steve Austin next, but there was a difference. They'd gained each other's respect and shook hands before the match. That didn't stop Stone Cold going straight into it though with all Luther's press taking Booker T down. It wasn't too long though before Booker T hit a signature of his own with a massive spine buster. Booker T enjoyed the advantage for a while and chucked Stone Cold to the outside, but after a while Stone Cold gained the advantage on the outside hitting a neck raker. Back on the inside though, he took Booker T's scissor kick. But Booker T couldn't get the free count and Stone Cold kicked out at two. He then followed that up with his elbow drop and a clothesline to the corner and when Booker T got up, he ate a Stone Cold stunner and Stone Cold got the one, two, three. It was time for main events, main event and the king of the ring, Dusty Rhodes took on the champion, The Undertaker. What? Heel turn? Dusty Rhodes attacked The Undertaker with a chair several times and then suplexed him onto the steel ramp. He then hit a clothesline for good measure and the referee called the match off. Why Dusty? Why? And onwards now as the future was in Providence, Rhode Island for NXT. We open with the underdog from the underground, Sami Zayn taking on Savio Vega, who was making his first appearance for a while. Both competitors had little flurries at the start of the match with Savio Vega hitting a nice big atomic drop. But eventually Sami Zayn would hit a Michinoku driver and then the Blue Thunder bomb. He then sent Savio Vega to the outside and hit his diving through the ropes tornado DDT. Back in the ring and Savio couldn't escape the exploder into the corner or the halluva kick and he was down for the free count as Sami Zayn won the match. Hardcore champion Kevin Owens was out next and he was supposed to take on Hideo Itami but Hideo couldn't wait and didn't want his entrance so he just ran out there and started beating on Kevin Owens. He then hit a butterfly suplex and threw Kevin Owens into the corner. After a Michinoku driver though, Kevin Owens got up a little bit of steam and hit a couple of moves but that was about it. Soon enough Hideo Itami was hitting him in the face and kicking him in the gut before a shotgun kick to the chest for the victory. And Hideo Itami, well, could he win the hardcore title soon? Xavier Woods and R-Truth haven't been getting on a lot recently and they were teaming to take on Enzo and Cass next but R-Truth decided he had to start the match and tagged himself in straight away. After hitting a move and then missing a move and getting bulldogged he tried to tag out. Xavier Woods said no and walked off. And for the second time in three weeks this left R-Truth fending for himself against an established NXT tag team. To be fair, Enzo did most of the work himself, including the ending DDT, which Colin Cassidy pinned for. So Enzo and Cass were victorious. Next up, the Vord villains took on the Lucha Dragons in the final semi-final match in the NXT Tag Team title tournament. The early going in the match was with Aiden English, but after a while Kalisto would reverse with a jawbreaker and tag into Sin Cara, who'd hit a arm drag before eating a slam, and then Aiden English would tag into Simon Gotch, and he hit a cool airplane spin. Sin Cara reversed again and tagged in Kalisto, who hit a nice neck breaker and followed that up with a Listo kick. After that though, Simon Gotch reversed again throwing Kalisto into the corner and getting the tag. They hit a double team move on Kalisto but quickly he reversed and hit a Selena Del Sol. Aiden English was able to kick out before hitting a backbreaker on Sin Cara who just tagged in. He then hit Sin Cara's own finisher on him. 
Simon Gotch tagged in, hit a move, and then the team hit a whirling dervish. Taking out Kalisto on the outside and then pinned Sin Cara to make it to the finals to take on Enzo and Cass at NXT Arrival. NXT's main event was Finn Balor who was getting a bit of revenge on Diamond Dallas Page or trying to DDP at his number at the start of the match hitting him with several moves including a Sean O'Hare thing. Love that move. A big elbow drop followed that but DDP couldn't complete the slam. Finn reversed, attacked the leg and hit a Pele kick. He then clotheslined him into the corner, tried to take him to the outside but DDP reversed and sent Finn outside himself. He had an inverted atomic drop out there but that was enough. Finn Balor rammed his head into the mats outside. A shotgun drop kick followed and then the coup de grace and Finn Balor was done for the day. After the match, DDP seemed to accept that he'd failed against Finn Balor and lifted his hand in victory. And as always we end the week with Smackdown which was in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. We opened with the Big Show, the World Heavyweight Champion, taking on Kofi Kingston once again. But Big Show was pissed off because last time he was out there he lost to Goldust because of Kofi. And because of this he didn't let Kofi get any offense in. Beating the shit out of him, sending him to the outside and then choke slamming him through the announce table. Back in the ring he shoulder blocked him from the top rope and pinned him for the 1-2-3. Big Show was pissed off. Well, he was. He tried to shake Kofi's hand afterwards, but that didn't go too well. The Intercontinental Champion Ken Shamrock took on former Intercontinental Champion The Miz next, and The Miz took a surprise early advantage, even going so far as to do Ken Shamrock's thing and work on the leg. That didn't go down too well. After a German suplex, Ken Shamrock was doing the same thing back to him, but seven times harder. Eventually, he'd lock in a leg grapple submission. Uh, he didn't tap out, but he held it on for quite a while, and uh, that pretty much wore his leg down to shit. After chop blocking him and doing a belly to belly, he knocked in the ankle lock, and that was that. The Miz tapped out. This does beg the question can anyone beat Ken Shamrock for that Intercontinental title? Next up, though. It was Luke Harper taking on Titus O'Neil in an Extreme Rules match, and Titus O'Neil went full extreme, well a little bit extreme, hitting him with a chair several times. The pair traded moves with a clothesline from Harper, a bulldog from Titus O'Neil, and then Harper got a massive slam. But then Titus O'Neil got hold of a kendo stick and whacked Harper down with it. Luke Harper tried to attack Titus O'Neil with a table, but he reversed it and hit him with it instead. Following that, he hit a signature and then a pump handle power slam through a table. He then hit the Clash of the Titus onto a chair, which gave him the victory and possible revenge for his tag partner. Before our next match could even start, Edge was attacked on the ramp by Stardust, who uh, was possibly getting revenge for being beat last week. He then sent him down the ramp and started hitting moves on the steel ramp, a suplex and then a crossroads just outside the ring before hitting an Alabama slam onto the ring steps. It seemed painful but Edge got a comeback when he got back in the ring and then following that an impaler DDT but when he went for the spear Stardust reversed into a DDT and hit the disaster kick which he then followed up with a pinfall and Edge was defeated. After the match though he went and grabbed a chair and beat him down some more. The final match of the video was a fatal four way organized chaos as Bad News Barrett, Zack Ryder, Cesaro and Christian faced off for the right to win a special prize. And it was organized chaos as all four men went crazy on each other. Cesaro and Christian teamed up very briefly on Zack Ryder but that didn't last as Cesaro was suplexing Christian after that. Bad News Barrett hit a big move on Cesaro before Christian did a hurricane runner from the top rope on Ryder. Barrett got nailed by a jumping DDT and a flying headbutt from Christian and then a very European uppercut from Cesaro. Christian then got tiger bombed by Zack Ryder. Back in the ring Cesaro took several moves uh, and it became a bit of a signature and finisher mania. The match only ended when Cesaro got hit by a bull hammer and a lifting reverse DDT by Barrett and he put his feet on the ropes. Though I wouldn't get too excited, he's got an intercontinental title shot now against Ken Shamrock. And so a few questions from the week. Will Dean Ambrose get his revenge on Brock Lesnar? Will we get the Hell in a Cell match I was hinting at earlier? <gasps> Did Big Show really think Kofi was going to shake his hand? What the fuck is Stardust's problem? And why, Dusty? Why? Find out all this and more on what happened on my universe. More like a subscribe.